Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the DRF race of the day for Friday, September the 20th. It's race number seven at Belmont at the Big A. Let's throw up the field for a pretty competitive first level allowance going a demanding mile and an eighth on the main track. It is a full field of 11 in here. And what do you do with the five Donegal surges? The New York bred train by Todd Pletcher was odds on in the Evan Shipman last time out and was awful. Boy, I, yeah, that's that's maybe one of the main questions of this race, Dan, because um, he's got, you know, several races prior to that one. They're going to give him a real chance in here. And I don't know what his excuse was last time, but that was not a promising performance. Horses on the far outside include the 11 certified lover boy, a horse that was third last time out and should show a little bit of speed stretching out from seven eighths of a mile. Let's see where time form us has a horse like certified lover boy. And it's close to the pace. Mama's gold's the speed because that's just simply his running style. He was a big speed in the Haynes field last time out coming into this race off a lengthy layoff at a tough distance to return off a benching. Yeah, he's going to have to be super fit here for his new trainer, Jimmy Ferraro, who's taken over um, for this horse for his return race. It's a long layoff. He's been this distance before. He's handled this distance before just fine. He does look like the main speed of this race. Um, we'll see how tight he is off the bench. Todd Pletcher not only has the number five at Donegal Surges, but also the number one Pirate, who would benefit perhaps if this pace is fast. And there were some people that were on Pirate after his first two starts at Saratoga last year. He was a super impressive debut winner at Odds On, then ran third in the grade one hopeful, and he just hasn't built on those successes as a three-year-old. Third last time out in an allowance race, probably works out a decent trip behind a fast pace here, breaking from the rail. Yeah, I'm not sure that he's good enough uh, to beat this field. Dan, assume everybody shows up. I still, I kind of wanted to stay a little interested in him here if he's the right kind of a price. If only because I, I do feel like there's a chance that even more distance really works for this horse. And I wonder, I wonder how dirty Duppy is coming into this race. I'm not, you know, maybe trying turf with him was a bad sign anyway for Pletcher three starts back, but he's not a turf horse. Um, the Monmouth race two starts back. He's last after failing to break sharply. That race was really slow early and way faster late. And I don't feel like he had any real chance in there. And then those, you know, he's main track only last time. Those ridiculous shoot races for the mile at Saratoga. If you don't get out of the gate well there, you lose position early. You can't win. And this horse was sort of brushing with a horse early. He wound up last in there. And to me, he just had no real chance in that race. The number two is Pentathlon. This is a Phipps homebred going out for Shug McGee. We say it often on our race of the day and stakes previews involving Shug horses. He likes to take his time, and sometimes his horses improve with more maturity and more distance. And Pentathlon got it done in his fifth lifetime start, a one-mile one race out of the shoot at Saratoga. He worked out a nice trip here under Joel Rosario, tracking the pace setter from the inside, tips to the two-path. But he has a lot of work to do and he finally not only reels this horse in but is getting away handily at the end fired a good one here and it, it did seem like a real move forward for this horse finally because he he had potential right from the start he had run several good races without winning the race two back was a little disappointing then where he just sort of sat alongside digital ops who's also in here and then it, it felt like he just kind of hung in that race at a really short price Rosario changed it up a little bit with him last time he's kept him behind that horse on the lead for a long way and then he finally moved him clear and let him run. This horse really, really ran last time. And listen, he's probably going to be a short price in here, and he's got to stretch out and go two turns for the first time, but he's bred to handle this, and there's a chance he moves forward again. Paddington has excellent tactical speed, and that should serve him well in this race, where he could sort of tuck in mid-pack and watch the pace develop. He's also run well fresh, and that could be key, because this is his first start since June. Now, he was listed as a vet scratch injured on July the 21st, and it's taken Linda Rice about two months to get him back onto the uh, into the entries. That being said, he was overmatched against a good one last time out. Yeah, he, he had no real chance in there. The race prior to that wasn't a poor performance at all, and it was off the long layoff. Um, so, listen, he, this horse is actually pretty good, and the, the nine furlongs is not a real issue for him. He's also the kind of horse who can be forward in this race but doesn't really need the lead. I mean, I'm not quite convinced that his top race is as good as some of the other horses' top uh, race in this spot, 
Um, but this horse, he's far from impossible in here at a fair price. Unmatched Wisdom came out of that last race to win the restricted Curlin with a 99 buyer, and he'll run in the Pennsylvania Derby apparently on Saturday. Reserve Currency is up next. This horse is coming off an okay third place effort going out of the mile shoot at Saratoga. Let's watch Reserve Currency. It's not like there was a ton of pace in this race, Mike. And Reserve Currency was settled in mid pack. He sort of won paced at this juncture and then he grinds away to finish third. It could be a nice sign for him stretching out for a trainer that does well with horses at longer distances. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, I listen, I can't say that I'm a huge fan of this horse. I'm not a huge fan of this race that he's exiting here. And then I'm just not a huge fan of his. Um, so we'll just see. He, he certainly ran well too back. I mean, that's that's a really good move for Maker that, you know, first off the claim with dirt routers, that's a really good move for Maker. And he got this horse to, to move forward. I just don't like his last race all that much. Donegal Surges is up next, a uh, four-year-old that has shown some ability in his career. He earned a 90 buyer speed figure going seven-eighths of a mile in a pretty likable performance when he won that second-level allowance at Belmont at the Big A. Earned a couple of stakes placings against New York Reds, but he was bad last time out. Maybe it was a muddy track at Saratoga, and maybe finally another race without Lasix got the better of him. He's going to get Lasix back here. We'll see how he fares going a mile and an eighth, because while he ran okay in the commentator two starts back, he was just second best. He was just second best in there, but that horse, that Drake's Passage, has a tendency to run really big sometimes when he has things his own way, and he had things his own way that day, and Donegal Surge just couldn't really make a race of it, but I thought he ran fine in there in his only start going this distance around two turns. I don't know, Dan. I think that's a good point. And I'm glad you brought up the Lasix thing because maybe that was the, the big issue with him last time. There is no layoff here. So Pucher just brings him right back. It feels like there's nothing wrong with him, but he's pretty hard to take at any kind of short price off that last that, that last running line. But he sure fits from a class standpoint, yeah. and he has figs. The horse that beat him last time out came back to run second in an open second level allowance with a 92 buyer. Digital Ops lightly raced horse trained by Chad Brown. You have to think he has a lot of upside. He was a winner at Aqueduct two starts back, a pace setting winner going a one turn mile. What did you make of his first start against winners, Mike? That first level allowance going this mile in an eighth distance showed a little speed and then kind of even throughout yeah i don't i don't mind that performance at all though dan because it it did feel like uh flavian prant had a plan in there he was like we're gonna go to the front with this horse and it was a good field anyway and just see what happens and unfortunately for him uh rocketeer the horse who finished third was first time blinkers in there and i actually think rocketeer is a good horse but rocketeer first time blinkers had no designs on rating in there he was very headstrong and prat just had to concede the lead to that horse and that pace was fast he did some chasing I thought all in all, he stayed on pretty well through the stretch in there, and he almost got up for third at the end. I have no problem with that performance. He beat Pentathlon two starts back when he broke his maiden. I, Pentathlon hung in that race. This horse was dead game through the stretch, and he's got upside. Mama's Gold is the number seven, and this horse really likes the running at Aqueduct. He has four prior victories over this surface, all of them in front-running fashion. The problem is we haven't seen this guy since late February. He was listed as a vet scratch here on March the 30th. Now he's with a new trainer. It's taken them a long time to get back to the races, and he has to go a mile and an eighth off of such a long layoff. I like his ability, especially his speed. He can get to the front, and when he is loose on the lead, he can yeah. get game. It just seems like a tough spot. I agree. We've seen some good things from this horse, though. When he does get loose on the lead, he, he can he can get really brave. Um, he's got that 99 buyer wiring a field over course and distance uh, in the slot, but that was, wasn't that long ago, Dad. I mean, he's, he's capable of that kind of a performance. I'm not betting him in here, but, you know, he's a little bit dangerous if he can shake loose early especially if the track comes up a little bit wet. That's something to yeah. consider. He really seems to move up on wet going. The eight is from another mother who making his third start of the Gustavo Rodriguez claim. This horse was up close to the pace and both starts off the claim before tiring a little bit. I wonder if this time around Junior Alvarado is going to try to get this horse to settle a little bit more, maybe even get a little bit of cover in the second flight before coming with a run. Might have no, no other choice but to try to sort of take a little spot just off the pace here but he's capable of running uh, with that running style dan i don't to me he was you know kind of hard to like in here i didn't really love his performance two starts back he was mto in that pirate race i would just rather have pirate 
um, out of that one. And then last time, um, again, that's not a race that I'm a big fan of, and I didn't really see this horse's excuse in that. The number nine, Sun Thunder, was second in the grade two Risen Star Stakes. He was actually on the Kentucky Derby Trail for a little while. He ran in the Kentucky Derby. He was 11th that year. He's still eligible for a now winners of two life race. Lots of minor awards on his page, but he's making his second start off a little bit of a layup, and he might get the right race flow. Yeah, he maybe he's the right closer in the race. If you feel like things could get heated up front, I guess that's that's certainly possible in here, Dan. Um, I just, you know, wonder how good he is. They're going to put the blinkers back on him here and see if that makes any kind of a difference. But you just see after the, they got him on the Derby trail, he ran fine in some of those races. He made it to the Derby. He comes back, um, earlier this year. I mean, what are his excuses in any of these N1X races where he's favored every single time and he settles for second or third every single time. I mean, I'm just not sure that this horse is, is, is that good. Five consecutive losses is the favorite to kick off his 2024 campaign. He should be a better price here, at least. The 10 is Jackson Heights, who rallied from left field to score two starts back. New York bred second level allowance, took advantage of fast interior fractions that day, going a one turn mile. Last time at a mile and an eighth, dropped back, was making up a little bit of ground late. He usually needs a lot of pace help yeah. and the right trip. Yeah, he's going to need a lot of help if he's going to win this race. Listen, his last two races are perhaps the two best that he's ever run, but he was in that uh, that Rocketeer race uh, that most recently with Digital Ops. That was a race, the pace was really fast in there, and he never made an impact two back. Maybe the ride of the meet at Saratoga from Dylan Davis to get this horse up by a nose. Certified lover boy, a gate to wire winner, two starts back going a one turn mile. Uh, now makes his first start off the John Toscano claim. He was wired last time out going seven eighths over a sloppy track. I have a feeling he might be at his best when he goes to the league, Mike. I'm not sure he can make the lead in here and breaking from this outside post. He's got to really work something out to avoid being hung extremely wide into the first turn. I worry about all those things too. He's also being claimed away from from Linda Rice here. Linda Rice got this horse to run the best race of his of his career off the claim two starts back, and he couldn't quite replicate it last time. And now he's got to move up in class and stretch out in distance. Before we take a look at our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Let's take a look at our top picks for Friday's DRF race of the day, 7th at Belmont at the Big A. You're going with Pentathlon, a shug trained horse coming off of a career best performance with the tactical speed to work out a trip in the second flight. Yeah, it seemed like a breakout performance for this horse uh, last time, so we'll see if he can take one more step forward. I, I like the way he's headed, Dan. I think he will handle the distance. I really... I, Almost talked myself into the six. Almost talked myself into the one. Um, there are the two other horses I'll use in here. I'll use Pentathlon in any sort of multiple race wagers. I'm going to give Donegal Surges one more try. The last race is simply too bad to be true. I just think getting Lasix back on might help this horse. And I think he is another one with the tactical running style to find good early position. 2615 for Mike, 5267 for me. Friday's DRF race of the day. Strong first level allowance at Belmont at the Big A. Good luck. Hey, buddy. Let me tell you something. If you really enjoyed this great content, just click the like and subscribe button right here. And if you enjoy the race of the day, stakes, previews, and lots, lots more starring me, please click right here. You're not gonna, you're not gonna regret it.